Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video I wanted to go step by step through the setup of the Starseeker 4 mount, from initially turning it on, setting your latitude, longitude, the time, the date, uh, finding two stars, and then getting, basically getting it calibrated to find objects in the night sky just by pressing the tour function or the object that you want to see. So uh, let's get started uh, with the basic info that you need for a setup, and I'll show you how it goes. So the first step, before you even think about uh, using the computer to find an object in the night sky, is to get your finder scope aligned. That is so critical, I can't stress that enough. If you just slap the finder on to the side during the setup when you're setting up your telescope, it will not be looking at the same thing the eyepiece is. It'll be close, but it won't be dead on. It'll be off enough where if you look through the finder and you put it on that star and you look through here, you might see some stars in the field and you might wonder, well, gee, I wonder which star it is in the field. That one's a little bit brighter than this one. That must be it. No, if you're, if you're pointing this at a really bright star and you look through here and you see a field of relatively similar brightness stars, I guarantee you the star that you've got in here is just out of the field of view. Pointing this at Arcturus or Altaris, some really bright star, you will know when you're on uh, that object or that star in the field of view, it'll be blindingly bright compared to all the other stars around. So that's the first key to realize, hey, maybe my finder is not aligned. So go through the alignment procedure in the manual, get this thing lined up during the day so you know you're looking at exactly the same thing between the two, uh, the eyepiece and the finder, and then you're ready to start the alignment procedure with the computer. All right, so the first step is to put in your uh, data. So you've got the mount ready to go. I'm gonna power it on here. And let's go step by step through the uh, computer boot up. So it uh, originally says, or it initially says initializing. Uh, it's looking for the motors, powering up, and then it gives you the firmware version, SynScan version 4. Point whatever. Um, you can look on our website to get the latest version under the telescope that you bought. Uh, there is a manual, software manual section. Well, next to that is the firmware download page. So right here, it looks like I've got the latest firmware, at least for when we're filming this. I'm going to hit enter during this screen to go to the next step. It'll give you a warning. Uh, don't use your scope. This is probably look at the sun, right? That's a very popular or, or, or very important warning uh, if you don't have a proper solar filter over the front of the telescope. So let it go through the warning and you can hit enter and it brings you to the alignment procedure. So first of all, you have to tell it where you are on earth. So you've got to find your location, your latitude and your longitude, and enter it into the uh, computer, into the hand controller. Now, how do you find that? You can look on a map, you can uh, look online, put in your address. Um, what I usually do is go to my phone, and in the compass setting, at least in the iPhone on the compass setting, just below the compass, it actually gives you your latitude and longitude and elevation. Um, if your phone doesn't have that, I'm sure there's several free apps that will use the GPS and give you your coordinates. Um, it gives it, that you need to enter it in degrees, minutes, uh, and seconds, not in decimal form. So if your uh, system is only showing you in decimal form, there's online calculators. Just plug in your uh, latitude and longitude and say convert decimal to uh, degree, minute, seconds, and it'll easily do that. So it starts with the set longitude. So I'm going to look at my phone here, and it says I'm, uh, the longitude is the west or east setting. And here in the western hemisphere, we're always west. 121 degrees, 47 minutes, 24 seconds. So the cursor is on west, so I'm already good. Uh, if you needed to change that, uh, you can hit the up or down arrows here to go west or east. But it's west, and then cursor over to the first one, so 121 it's already there basically, so I'm going to say 121, I'll just re-enter it, 47. That only needs to get down to the minutes, so you don't really need to enter the seconds, it's not that critical. And the cursor will go back to the west, so you're, you're, you're good at this point. It's showing you the correct uh, location for longitude. Hit enter, it will now shift to set latitude. So same thing, I'm in the northern hemisphere, so it's set to north. Um, I can scroll up or down to set that south if I needed to and then over to 36, and looks like I'm already set, so I'm just gonna re-enter it over top. Um, I can, uh, let me just put in something that's not correct, so I'll put 35, 55, and it goes back over to the, the cursor's back over to the north. Well, that's not right, I'm one degree off, so let's go over again, 36, 55, and then hit enter again. Now it asks for the time zone. So put in your local time zone, ignoring daylight savings time. Sometimes, like in the Pacific, 
coast here were minus eight, or technically you can think of it as minus seven during daylight savings time, but no, this, this uh, location is minus eight all the time. So minus on this side of uh, um, uh, Greenwich, uh, England, zero eight, which it already is it looks like, and I'm good to go. Hit enter. Enter your elevation. Well, my phone actually is telling me my elevation. Um, minus, I'm going to shift that to plus, and I'll move over. Now, my elevation here is listed in feet, and that's in meters. So without a calculator here, 160 feet is probably zero. It's probably like 50 meters, maybe I'll just say 50 meters. That, that could be totally wrong, but it's probably pretty close. Um, that's not very critical either. The, the elevation doesn't affect anything um, except for... Um, uh, some minor calculations, but it's going to get it in the field of view, so you don't have to be very critical with that. Just get it within a couple hundred feet and you're fine. So I've got my elevation, so just hit enter. Now it's asking for the date, and I've forgotten what the date is at the moment. Okay, August 08, August 9th, 09, month, day, year, 2018. And the cursor goes back to the beginning. Does verify? That's correct. Yes. Enter. The time, okay, so here's where I'm going to kind of fake it out because um, you'll be doing this at night and I know where a few stars are at night at a certain time. So I'm going to say it's, uh, this is in military time, so you've got to do 24-hour time. So 9 p.m. is 2100, so 210000. Now look at your phone to do that. It doesn't have to be exact atomic time, but within a minute or five is, is what you want to be to, to get the most accuracy. So, so look at your, um, your smartphone and you'll have a perfect perfectly acceptable uh, accuracy on the time. So let's just say it's 2100, 9 p.m. tonight. When I hit enter, it's gonna verify 9 p.m. So it just kind of shifts it back to 12 hour a.m. p.m. time just to make sure you did the 24 hour conversion correct. So yes, 9 p.m. tonight and it's already starting to count up. Uh, hit enter again. Uh, daylight savings time. So this is where you get to put in if you're on summer daylight savings or not. So right now, obviously in August, um, in California at least, we are in daylight savings time, so I'll hit yes. But I can uh, actually scroll through the up and down arrow buttons here to say yes or no. So yes, enter. Begin alignment. That's the next step. Yes or no. Uh, don't hit escape from here or enter. Pick, a, pick what you want to do. If you want to do alignment, hit one. And if you don't want to do the alignment, let's say you just want to look through the menus, you can hit no. But obviously we're doing an alignment right now, so I'm going to hit yes. Now it brings you to the alignment method. And there are several listed. Brightest star, NP error, cone error. There's a bunch of daylight align. Two star line, um, and then back to brightest star, using these arrows down here for cycling through the list. Now, brightest star and two star alignment are probably the most popular uh, with the star seeker line, but my favorite is the two star line. It's, it's easy, it's accurate, you know exactly which stars you're using. Brightest star, you have to kind of figure out which quadrant you're looking at, so I don't like that one as much. So pick two star alignment, at least for the initial setup, and then later you can experiment and see if you like the other one better. So two star alignment, hit enter. Now, it searches through a list and it comes up with probably 15 or 20 stars that you can choose. Some of them are very bright, like the first one it suggested for our date and 9 p.m. tonight is Arcturus. So if you scroll through the list, you can pick different stars. Arcturus is a very bright one, and like I said, the one I'm going to use, Vega is also bright, Altair. Um, but you can get down into some stars that I haven't even heard of. Uh, uh, Shaula, I don't know where that is. Um, a couple of these other ones I'm not even going to try to pronounce. So obviously, pick bright ones that you know, right? Now, how to find those stars. That's another uh, key thing you need to do. Uh, if you have one of our star target planispheres, you can use that. Uh, but now everybody's favorite, I'm going to get back to Arcturus here. Everybody's favorite method of doing it is using one of those astronomy apps on your phone where you uh, hold up the phone and it uses the accelerometer and the compass inside to identify exactly what you're looking at in front of you. And I used that a little bit earlier. Our, our software is called Starseek, and you can get it on the App Store. Um, but there's a bunch of them. Our, ours costs a little bit of money because you can attach it to the telescope and control it, control the scope from your phone. But there's some freeware versions that don't have as much resolution, but are great for just identifying stars. So pick the one you like best, and then use it. And I did it earlier, and I know Arcturus at 9 p.m. is right over here. So I'm going to just pretend, since I'm inside during the day, that I'm actually looking at Arcturus. So I'm going to pick Arcturus in the list, and I'm going to hit enter. 
it doesn't go anywhere. The first star in the two-star alignment, you manually point it to it. And right now it's saying point scope two, and it's giving you the coordinates of Arcturus. Now that doesn't really mean much to me without actually knowing, uh, having an equatorial scale or something, but I know with the phone, that bright star there is Arcturus. I'm picking Arcturus, so I know Arcturus is right over here. I'm gonna move the scope over. You can actually do it manually with a Star Seeker 4, or you can use the arrow buttons. Whoops, going the wrong way. I'm gonna bring it over to the rough position I think uh, Arcturus was when I calculated it earlier. So right about there, up or down. Get it in the Easy Finder uh, uh, heads up display, the little dot, put it right on the dot. And then if you look through the eyepiece, it'll probably be somewhere in the field of view. If not, make sure you've aligned your finder scope. Um, so once I've got Arcturus there, I hit enter. It'll say center to eyepiece. Now, didn't I just do that? I moved it all the way over, I pointed it at Arcturus. But when you saw I was moving the arrows, it was moving the scope pretty fast. That's the rough alignment. It was asking you to point it pretty close to Arcturus, as close as you can get. Uh, it may or may not be dead center in the eyepiece. But this next step, when it says Arcturus center to eyepiece, now if I use the arrow buttons, I actually don't, I don't see anything happening. It's, it doesn't seem to be moving. But if you look through the eyepiece, it's moving very slowly up, down, left, and right. This is the fine tuning to get Polaris right in the middle of your eyepiece. So center to eyepiece, look through the eyepiece, get it as close to center as you can eyeball, and then hit enter and you're good. That star is now calibrated in the uh, database. Now it asks you for the second star. And again, you can scroll up or down, Vega, Altair, uh, Antares. I think I'm gonna use Altair for the second one because I believe I calculated that was over here somewhere. Now, when I hit enter, since it already has one point to begin with, it's going to know where, which way to go. So it'll head off on its own. It'll go to somewhere close to where Altair is. So let's see how close I got. Looks like Altair was very close to the same altitude. It only moves a little bit down, but it's a long way off in azimuth. And when you're picking two stars, you wanna have two stars that are fairly widely separated. If you pick two that are very close together, you won't get a very good resolution of all sky pointing accuracy. All right, so I, I guess pretty, pretty close. Arcturus was over here, Altair was somewhere over here. So give it a second. It will now say center to eyepiece. Now again, look through the finder scope. It's probably not gonna be dead on because you've only done one alignment point, but it'll be close. It'll be somewhere in this area of the sky, probably pretty close to where the finder is, but I don't think it'll be in the eyepiece. That's what you wanna use the center to eyepiece buttons for, to move up, down, left, and right. Now, if you weren't perfectly aligned or you didn't put in the right uh, coordinates exactly, it may be a little further away than you wanna, uh, if you press this button, it might take a minute or two to get over to it. You can always, at this point, hit the rate button and change the speed. So right now it's set to four, that's the centering speed of the star. Let's set it to seven. Oops, I, I waited too long to do that. Rate, seven. Now when I move the buttons, well that's still a little short, so let's go to rate, rate nine. When I move the buttons, see it's much faster. So if, our, uh, if the second star, Altar, wasn't very close, you can get it close that way, and then hit rate again, back to four or three. And if you wait a second, the display will go back to center Altair. Use the arrow buttons and get it as centered as you can. Okay, I hope I haven't messed it up too far from where it thought Altair was since I'm not actually using real stars. But I'm going to say, okay, now I've centered it, hit enter. Alignment, successful. Those two star points, now it knows where everything is in the sky and you're ready to start observing. So at this point, you can just hit escape a couple of times to get back up to choose menu. Now you're at the main menu and you can scroll through the list. Setup, utilities, object list. But the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is point it to something. So now you're ready to view an object. Uh, pick an object from the database. So if you're gonna hit the Messier's, hit M and then pick an object, uh, let's say M27, that's the dumbbell. And uh, I think that's fairly close to Altair. So let's see if I'm right, hit enter. Current altitude azimuth, just hit enter. View object, yes or no, hit enter and it will go to the object. So pretty close to Altair. Um, give it a second, it will settle down, and then with your low power eyepiece, you should see uh, M27 in the field of view. There's a whole bunch of other objects you can look at, so uh, read through the manual, figure out the databases. There's a tour function for uh, the telescope to pick objects to look at. There's the planetary list, all sorts of objects to see.
There are several questions that people ask us about the hand controller, and so I wanted to answer a few of those. And one of the uh, first ones we get is occasionally you'll see when you uh, do the alignment procedure and you finish uh, one of the steps, you'll get an error message saying the NPE data is less than or is more than zero. And you can enter past it and everything will be fine, but it always comes up every time you boot up and do your alignment. It gets kind of annoying. Let me show you how to get rid of it. Uh, go into your menu, and you don't have to do an alignment for this. You can say no to the alignment procedure. Uh, go to setup, so scroll through. So it was already on setup, so there's setup right there. Hit enter. Cycle through until you get to alignment. Not alignment stars, but alignment. Hit enter. Scroll through until you see NP error. Hit enter, and there'll be a a uh, set of numbers here, NPE equals, and in this case it says plus zero degrees, zero minutes, zero seconds. Well, sometimes um, a setting of zero one can be installed. Uh, zero one in seconds would be input. So just move all the way over to whatever number is there and hit zero and hit enter. Then it's cleared out and it's actually in the firmware at this point. So you can shut it off, turn it back on, and you won't get that message again. You don't need that for an Altas setup like this. Um, and you're using two-star alignment anyways. So it's just a good way to clear out the error in case you're getting it. Another thing people ask us about is um, if you can just do the alignment method once and then you're good to go, or if you have to do it each time you set up. Well, I've done the two-star alignment now and it knows where everything is, but it does not know if I pick this up and move it like this. So now the computer is just completely messed up. It has no idea I've done that. So when you're done for the night and you break it apart and you put it in the bag and you come back the next day, you will have to do the alignment again. Even if you were to try to get the tripod to the same location and do the park system, it, it's never a perfect alignment. So just do the, the setup again. It's pretty quick and easy to do the two-star alignment. Um, so you'll be up and running in no time, especially with a little bit of practice. Now there is one exception to that. If you are okay leaving the telescope out that night. Let's say it's a long weekend and you're in a secure location and you don't have to break the telescope down and put it away. You can park the telescope. Just go into the uh, utilities menu and select park telescope and you can park to the current position or to a custom position. And what that does is it basically saves to the firmware exactly where it's pointing and you can then shut the power off. You still can't move it by hand. You have to leave it exactly where it is. But when you come back to it the next day, if you don't touch anything and you turn it on and you tell it what time it is, it will calculate exactly where everything is and you won't have to do, redo the alignment. But that's the only way you don't have to do the alignment is parking it and then not touching it when it's off. You can actually move the scope by hand up on top here. So let's say I've done the alignment like I have and I'm moving it by hand this way. There are encoders built in to each axis, up and down, left and right. They're um, shaft encoders, so it knows that I'm moving this. The computer can keep track. So let's say I'm looking at, uh, what was I looking at over here? This was the dumbbell. Let's say Jupiter's over here. If I didn't go to the hand controller, I can get it most of the way over to Jupiter here, and then say, hey, go to Jupiter, and it will figure out and, and line up on Jupiter and save you some maybe battery power slowing around. That's perfectly fine. You can move it by hand as long as you unlock the vertical axis. You don't have to do that with the um, azimuth axis. It's on a little slip clutch. Just don't touch the tripod below. Don't let anybody kick the legs because that can jar the alignment out of uh, position. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is battery power. I've got this plugged into an AC adapter plugged into the wall. If you have an extension cord, that's probably the best, most cost-effective way over the long run because you don't have to keep replacing batteries. But if you're away from a wall outlet, uh, you'll either be using a 12 volt external uh, power source or plug in eight AA batteries into the uh, arm. Batteries only last so long. When the battery power gets low, when those, when those AA batteries start to drain, the computer will get really confused and all sorts of weird things will happen. So make sure if you're on battery power that you always have a fresh set of batteries. And most likely when the, power, when the battery level drops enough for the computer to get confused, it will lose its alignment and you'll have to start over. So, Make sure you've got a fresh set of batteries, or better yet, use a, uh, an external 12 volt source or an AC adapter plugged into the wall, and then you, you never have to worry about uh, power getting low. All right, well, there you have it. That was uh, some tips, tricks, and then basically a rundown of how to align the Starseeker 4 computer system. 
Uh, I hope that helps. It'll get you up and running quicker and allow you to see objects in the night sky without having to hunt them down yourself. Just remember, align that finder scope. That is probably key. And then pick two bright stars. Make sure you're looking at the right stars with the uh, phone uh, uh, program to uh, the planetarium program that will identify stars or use a planisphere. Just make sure you find two bright stars to align on. All right, I think that's about it. Thank you very much. Clear skies.